All right, welcome back to today's lesson, Unit 5.2 on Kinetic Energy and Work Energy Theorem. Now, the last video that we did, Unit 5.1, is where we first talked about what is work. And so we addressed in order to do work, work is equal to a force times some distance. That's all work is, a force, but there has to actually be some distance. Now, again, the cool thing about work is unlike vector type quantities, work is a scalar quantity. That means there is no direction involved in work. So we actually, if something moves along a path like this, well, we actually want to know this actual distance, not the displacement, but we actually want to know this distance. And again, if I didn't tell you before, the way I always remember that S stands for distance is I just remember this picture of this curving line representing distance. And that's always helped me with that. So what is it to have kinetic energy? Well, simple. If somebody throws an object, if you've got a baseball and it is thrown through the air, yeah, that object has kinetic energy. In order to have kinetic energy, you need two things. You need mass, and second, you need velocity. But now kinetic energy is also what's known as a scalar quantity. That means there is no direction involved in this. Kinetic energy can be, there. there is no direction involved in it. So kinetic energy is what it is. All right, so you need mass and velocity. So the basic equation for kinetic energy, kinetic energy is equal to one-half mv squared. And that is simply the equation for kinetic energy. So what is this one new thing? We've all heard of kinetic energy before in this equation. But what is this work energy theorem? All right, the work energy theorem, it's usually written like this. It's usually written like work net is equal to, and I love this. Those of you that learn work net can do so many problems. Work in other words, the sum of all the work in a system, the sum of all the work in a system is equal to change in kinetic energy. That's it. It's equal to a change in kinetic energy. So usually I don't do this a whole lot. Now we can rewrite this as work net equals, we could write Ke final minus Ke initial if we needed to. Uh, I myself, uh, this is usually the way like we memorize it for all purposes. We usually just remember that work net is equal to one half mv square minus one half mvo square. And you could write vf minus vi square. I see it written that way in books. I just usually always write it this way because that's the notation we're used to. So that is our equations for work net. Now, we're not going to so much do it as of right now, but later on, this is going to grow. We could end up with all different types of work. And again, a lot of problems you've done in the first four chapters of physics, you can use this one equation to work, and it makes things so much easier. And we'll get to that in a little bit. But for right now, I want to go ahead and look at the problems. We should be able to work all the problems in this unit so far based on just this. So the first question I'm going to look at is this question B about 1,400 kilogram car has a forward force of 4,500 newtons applied to it. The car starts from rest and travels down a horizontal highway. What are its kinetic energy and speed after traveling 100 meters? So here's what we've got. There's a car, and I'm just going to do a little. It tells us that the mass of the car is 1,400 kilograms. So we'll go ahead and take care of that. Mass of the car is 1,400 kilograms. It says that there is a force on the car of 4,500 Newton. So there's our 4,500 Newton force on that car. Uh, what else does it tell us about it? It really doesn't say a whole lot. It just says that the car travels 100 meters. Now, this is what in the past I would typically refer to as an X, this displacement. But uh, we're doing work problems, so there's a good chance that's going to be my S in these work problems. So 
my distance is going to be pretty much 100 meters in this one. This problem asks me to find two things. It wants to know this kinetic energy down here, and it wants to know this velocity. So that's the two things I'm missing in this. Well, let's just go back to this. Work net is equal to delta Ke. So work is equal to a change in kinetic energy. Well, look at what's given you. It's given you a force in a distance. Well, that is work. If you remember, work is equal to Fs. So all we got to do is replace work net with Fs and make that equal to, and if you want to, we can write it like this, Ke final minus Ke initial. Now, here's the thing. Initial velocity was zero. So VO is a zero. So that means there is no initial kinetic energy. So look, if we want to find this kinetic energy, it's just Fs. So all we've got to do is 4,500 times 100. Hey, we don't need a calculator. 45, 0, 0, and add two more zeros. And this is energy. It is work. So the unit is a joule. So there. There is our kinetic energy. Now it asks us to find velocity. Well, that's not really a big deal either because all we've got to do is know that kinetic energy is one half mv square. So we can come in here and just 4.5, what was that, times 10 to the 5? 4.5 times 10 to the 5 equals one half 1400 times v square. Well, let's see what we got here. So this is going to be 4.5, oops, 4.5, 10 to the 5, divided by 700. And, of course, we need to, so that's 643, and that's equal to our V square. So now let's take a square root of both sides of this. So square root... 25.4. So there is our final velocity, 25.4 meters per second. All right. Well, that was example B for this unit. Let's let's go ahead and see what example C looks like on here. We'll finish up that video when we do that. A 2-gram bullet leaves the barrel of a gun at a speed of 300 meters per second. Find its kinetic energy. Find the average force exerted by the gases on the bullet as it moves down the 50-centimeter barrel. So let's do this again. I know if you watch all the videos, you're going to get very used at some point to seeing me do this. But hey, that's just part of it. It says that the bullet leaves with a speed of 300 meters per second. So we've got a final velocity of 300. We've got a velocity initial of zero, assuming the bull's not, bullet's not moving at one end. It says that the bullet has a mass of 2 grams, which we're not going to use that. So what we will use is 0.002 kilograms, and if you have problems doing those conversions, you can watch my video in Unit 1 on metric prefixes. But anyway, so that's 0 .002 kilograms. Uh, let's see what else. It says that the bullet, the barrel has a length of 50 centimeters, which would be 0.5 meters. And this can be an X, but since we're doing work problems, I'm going to go ahead and say that's going to be my S when I go to work these problems. So this problem wanted to know what things. Let's look back over. It said, tell me the kinetic energy. Well, let's see. Kinetic energy is equal to. Well, if we need kinetic energy, that's easy. Anything with mass and motion has kinetic energy. So all we have to do is come back one half point zero zero two times 300 square, and we've got this. So all we've got to do is 300 square, let's see, that would be 90000, half of 002 is 001, which is the same as 1 over 1,000, 
So that's the same as dividing this by a thousand. Yes, that's right. We're not going to use a calculator if we can have. So that's cancel three zeros. So our answer is 90 joules. Get that calculator out of my sight. So we've got 90 joules of energy. So there is our answer to part A. All right, part B says, uh, let's see, find the force on the bullet. Well, let's go back to this. Work net is equal to delta KE. Well, essentially, this is our kinetic energy final over here. Kinetic energy initial is, it's going to be zero because the bullet wouldn't move. And so really, delta KE is 90. Our change in energy, it went, from, it went from having zero joules of energy at this end of the barrel to having 90 joules of energy on this end of the barrel, the dangerous part of the barrel. But anyway, so all we've got to do is come back down here and change work net to FS, and that's going to be equal to 90. And wait a second, we know distance. We know that it's a half. So F times one half of a meter equals 90. Well, 90 divided by a half is the same thing as multiplying by 2, so we've got 180 newtons, this force, and there is the quote, and it said average force, so theoretically we could put a line like that over it, but anyway, there is the average force exerted on this bullet. All right, uh, just watch out for the problems. Most of them are pretty easy. They're just using most of the problems in this next little section are just using a combination of uh, work equals FS, KE equals one half MV square, oops, forgot my E, and then some form of the work energy theorem, one half MV square minus one half MVO square. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching.